in Affinity Designer, there are lots of different ways of creating shapes, but the pen tool is probably the big granddaddy of them all. You can use it to create shapes, but also in lots of different programs like Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, the pen tool is also used to create very precise selections. So it really is worth getting to know. So in this extended tutorial, I'll take you through the basics plus all the various different options so you get a thorough understanding of it. And if you do get some good information out of this video, think about clicking on the link below to enroll on the course where this tutorial came from. That way you get over 17 hours worth of tuition from the top rated Affinity Designer course on Udemy. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the pen tool is this icon or P on your keyboard. Let's select it. And just very quickly, if I click with my left mouse button and click with my left mouse button and click with my left mouse button again, I'm setting down points. Now I'm going to click and drag with my left mouse button. You see that? I've created a couple of direction handles, also known as control handles. And in between this node and the previous one, I've created a curve. And if I do the same thing again, I will click and drag. There's another curve. And so the first thing to say is, if I just click and let go, I get a square node, and that's going to give me a sharp point. And if I click and drag, I get a round node, and that's going to give me my direction handles, and it's going to give me a curve in between those two points. Let's bring this round like this. Can you see every time I put down a point, if you look closely at my cursor, it does look like a pen. And at the moment, there's a little plus sign there. That means the next time I do something, I'm going to create a new node. If I then come back to my start point, closer and closer and closer until eventually I get that little circle. That means I'm going to close this shape either with another sharp node or I can click and drag and create something in between. It looks like a square node, but I also get this control handle there. And from there, remember the node tool? Let's press A on our keyboard so my node tool is selected. And now I can come back in and I can alter this to my heart's content. I can come back to here. I can drag things out like this. I can come to this point here. You can see I've got two independent handles there. I can move them around all I want. Or I could come up here and convert it to a smooth node like that. So the direction handles move at the same time. I can increase my width like this. I can change the stroke color. Let's change that to something fairly bright so that when I move away and select here, you can see my blue line, which shows me where the actual curve is because the stroke is an attribute of that curve. The stroke can be as thick or as thin as you like but it's that little blue line that you can see connecting the various different nodes, that is your actual curve. And if I want to fill, I can put a fill in there. And that, in a nutshell, is the pen tool. It works in a similar way to the pencil tool in that you can drag out your own custom shape using it. But with the pencil tool, you draw a line and then Affinity Designer comes in afterwards and figures out where all the various different nodes are for that curve. And that can be nice for putting down fairly fast flowing strokes, but it can leave you with a bit of a headache when you want to control what's happening with those curves, as we've seen. But with the pen tool, it's all down to you. You decide where to place the nodes, you decide whether they are sharp or curved, you decide how much of a curve there is in between two different nodes, and you get to control the control handles. Now the pen tool is considered by many people who work in the industry as being the ultimate tool for either drawing out a shape or in the case of photo editing, for example, drawing out a shape, then converting that shape to a selection so you can alter whatever is inside the selection or outside of the selection. Because instead of trying to trace out a shape, which can be a bit difficult, you plot the points. You get to control where those points get placed and you get to control the curves in between. So it is ultimate controllability. And there are one or two designers who insist they will not use anything else. I'm not so sure about that. Let's take, for example, the rectangle tool. I can drag out a shape like this. And okay, it's not looking quite as fluid as that pen shape I drew out, but look, if I convert it to curves, my node tool is automatically selected. I can move the lines and I automatically get control handles created. I can 
click to create a new node, I can move that around as well. I can come and I can convert that node to a smooth node like this and move that around all I want. And I can gradually build up quite a complicated shape this way. A lot of it depends on how you want to work. If you are creating a shape, for example, providing it's not too complicated, then calling up one of the basic shapes down here and then converting to curves and then editing that way, well, yeah, that can work. Anyway, let's get rid of these two and tell you a little bit more about the pen tool. Okay, let's tell you a little bit more about the pen tool. Press P on your keyboard and the pen tool gets selected. At the moment, we're in this mode, pen mode. That's where I showed you the various different things you can do. And if I just quickly drag out stuff like this, that's what you get. And I'll press escape to finish that curve and start a new one like this and escape for that. Do you notice there, I have two different curves there created using my pen tool and I have two different layers there, curve and curve. So each of those pen curves gets its own layer. Well, here's something. Supposing I select both those layers and I'll come to layer, geometry, merge curves. I have two layers and both of them are called curve. So if I come to merge curves, I now have one layer called curves, plural. And if I use my move tool, I can move them around and they effectively move around as one. Just incidentally with this, if I come to the fill for them and I select color, notice how they both have their own fills. Both of them open shapes because I didn't close the shape, but they move together as one. If I want to separate them, that's easy. Just come to layer, geometry and separate curves. And they go back to their own layers. Let's delete those and come to my pen tool or P on my keyboard. You could see at the moment I'm dragging out in pen mode, but you've got three other modes here. Let's take a look at this one, smart mode. I'll click to add a point, then I'll click to add another point. Can you see that? I'm dragging around, but I'm not getting any control handles. The point itself is moving around. Then if I click here, oh, now you can see I'm starting to get a curve, but I'm dragging my point around like this. I come back and close the curve there. So instead of put down a point, then drag it out, it's not like the default mode, which is this one, pen mode. Instead of putting down a point, and if I drag out direction lines or control handles with this, when I click and drag, I drag the point itself around like this. Some people find that a more comfortable way to work. And if I just click and drag, well, you can see I'm not getting sharp points. I'm still getting curved points. That is not a problem. I can always come to my node tool or A on my keyboard, select a node and convert it to a sharp point like that. Back to my pen tool or P and we have this polygon mode. This is straightforward enough. I can just click out various different points. If I click and drag, I drag the point around like this and close the point like that. Again, press A for my node tool, come to this point and I can always convert it to either a smooth point or a smart point and move that around. Let's get rid of that. And finally, P for pen mode and you have this line mode. All this does is create discrete lines like this, just consisting of two points. And if I click and drag, I drag a point out like that. Now here's the interesting bit. I'll come back to my pen mode and I'll start drawing out a curve like this. Supposing I get to this point here and I think, well, actually, you know what? I wouldn't have minded an extra point down here somewhere. Well, look, you can see here, I'm getting a little kind of highlight guide there and I'm thinking, oh, I've got my plus sign as well. So if I click there, I'll be able to create a point in between my currently selected node and the previous one, so I come to here and oh dear, that's gone wrong. That is a very common mistake that people make. I will press Control or Command plus C to undo that. Instead, if I hold down on an Apple, it's my Command key. On a PC, it's going to be Control. Watch what happens. My cursor changes and basically I get my Node tool. Rather than having to go through all the palaver of coming to my Node tool, having to edit that particular point that I want to edit and then figure out a way to carry on my curve. It's not gonna work very well, is it? But 
holding down my command key on a Mac, control on a PC, I get my note tool and, oh, look at that. I can make the changes I want, like this. I can select different nodes and move them around. I'm keeping my control or command key pressed down. And now I'm gonna to come to this one here. And if I hold down my Alt key, look, I can break the direction lines temporarily. Hold down my Alt key. And now I'm going to let go of everything and I get my pen tool back and drag out like that. And I can carry on with my pen tool. All the changes are all intact, they're all in place. And also this endpoint here, I broke the direction lines on the fly while I was going around. That makes life really easy and interesting. Incidentally, I am showing you these various important modifier keys like the command key or the control key or the alt key or the option key and the various different keys and how you can alter your workflow is what makes the pen tool a very elegant tool now whenever i say elegant what i really mean is once you've learned your modifier keys you can do a whole load of things on the fly and intuitively but learning the modifier keys that can be really difficult it takes a long time to memorize all the various different things you can do so just be aware that while you are learning you are are going to make mistakes and you are going to press the wrong modifier key and you are going to end up cursing affinity designer and the people who made it and me for telling you about it the trick here is take a little bit of time and just play with the tool and try and memorize the steps even just five minutes at a time open up affinity designer create a new document select the pen tool and just play with it and the modifier keys in the end you do internalize the knowledge i promise you Okay, let's tell you a few more things. The actions, all right. There's my curve. If I want to close my curve, I can come to close curve and the curve is closed. And you notice, because my two end nodes were rounded nodes, it's made a nice job of putting in a rounded point there. If on the other hand, I was to do something like this and click on close curve, I get a straight line. Let's just undo that and I will press A and I'll come to this node here. And then I will come to break curve. I click there. You now see I have three layers here. That's three shapes instead of two. And if I come to my move tool, you can see I split the curve into two separate parts there. Let's get rid of those three and I will draw out a curve like this. Okay, so I press my escape button to finish it. And now I will come to this one here, smooth curve. At the moment I have three nodes. If I come to smooth curve, it adds more nodes. Now I wonder with this one, let's try doing some sharp stuff like this, a little bit of rounded, a little bit of fiddly stuff around here and finish off with a sharp point. If I come again to smooth curve, it doesn't stick extra nodes in the straight lines. It does place extra nodes into the curvy areas. Now, why would you use that? Well, if you suddenly realize for your shape, you just haven't used enough nodes, then you can always come to this smooth curve to add extra nodes in for you. And from there, you can press A on your keyboard for the node tool and start moving things around like this. I do worry with this though, you're gonna end up with the same problem you have with the pencil tool, which is too many nodes. And the more nodes you have, the harder it is to edit your shape and the much harder it is to get nice sweeping curves to your shape. So be careful when you use this one. We've got our line selected and let's come to our stroke properties. And for the start of the stroke, let's put on an arrow like that. And then I look at that and I think, and we have a lovely representation. Actually, you know what? Let's make it red. And there's a lovely representation of the world economy at the moment. But supposing we give this to your average politician and they turn around and say, well, actually, we want it the other way around. So the economy looks like it's going up. That's not a problem. Come to this one. Reverse curves. Now your start point becomes the end point and vice versa. And so... The arrow's there and oh, my apologies. There you go. Everything's going to be all right. All right, let's take this. Uh, let's take it to there. No tool selected. Let's take that endpoint and let's take this point here, two endpoints. So we have our start point here and our endpoint here. 
and my yellow curve is at the bottom. Let's come to join curves. I lose that arrowhead off the end of that curve. It's turned yellow, it's taken on the attributes of the lower shape. Let's undo that for a second. I wonder if I come to this node and this node and I come to join curves. No, it takes the start point of this curve and connects it to the end point of that curve. Let's get rid of that and let's create a new line like this. Let's get rid of that arrow, shall we? I wouldn't have minded having more of a curve on the same layer. Well, that's not a problem. Look, if I come to here, add new curve to selected curves object, I'll do that. And I'll come here, I'll create a new curve and click on escape. And sure enough, look, both curves are on the same layer and they're both called curve. Now I wonder, layer, geometry, separate curves, will they separate out? Yes, they will. So that's fine. Let's control command plus C to undo that. And while we're here, let's try joining the curves. That doesn't work because they're on the same layer. Let's come to layer, geometry, separate curves, and come to join curves. Now they do join. Let's deselect that, create a little curve like this, and then I'll come to this. Preserve selection when creating new curves. All right, well, let's escape for that and click on this and you see what's happening here? You may not have figured out what's going on at the moment. I'm drawing out a new curve, but if you notice, the previous curve I drew is still selected. Its nodes are still active. Now the advantage of doing that, if I press escape at the moment, is that if I come to this point here, see how it starts to highlight like this? Well, it means that I can carry on doing stuff. It's a separate curve, but it snapped to that endpoint much better than I was hoping for. And that's the point of that one. The final thing I want to show you, let's just get rid of all of these, is this one, rubber band mode. Let's click on that. Now I create a point like this and watch this. I'm getting a little preview of where my curve is gonna be when I place my next point. Can we just say how enormously useful that might turn out to be? Look, if I just left click and create a sharp point, yes, it still got that right, didn't it? What about it saying now, if you put down another sharp point, you get that line, that's great. The only thing is when you go from a sharp point to a curved point, that little guy to let you know what's gonna happen, is probably gonna get it wrong. But for all other intents and purposes, this is very, very useful. I just want to select my pen tool again, because I want to explain these snapping options here. Now, all the way through with this, we've had this on, snap to geometry of selected curves. So I turn that on, and I'll draw out a shape here, and if I come close, you see that? I get that little yellow area there, plus that node there. It's snapping to that point. It's not going to create a new node on that red curve. Instead, it will draw a node going across that curve like that. I could do without that, so I will undo, and this time I'll draw out a curve, but I'll turn off snap to geometry of selected curves, and do that, and now I'll come closer and closer and closer, and I just glide right on by. That's what this button does. It lets you snap to the geometry of anything that is currently selected. All right, I'll get rid of that. Now what about this? Align to nodes of selected curves. Well, let's turn that on. I have my starting point there. Now, can you see that? Whenever I get horizontal with one of the nodes, like this one or that far node, I get a red dot and a red line. What about vertical? I get a green dot and a green line. That enables me to snap to any node that is selected. You can see now I've got two points creating my new curve. This one down here is no longer selected, so I'm not getting the effect with the old curve, but with the new one, yes I am. If ever I'm directly above or directly to the side, I get a little snapping guide. All right, now the next snapping function is a little bit obscure, but I'll explain it to you. Snap all selected nodes when dragging. This only works when either this icon or this icon are active. If they're both active, they're great. If only one is active, that's great. If they're both inactive, it becomes ghosted out. So let's try this one. Align to nodes of selected curves, and I'll select this curve. 
I will hold down my shift key and select my other curve. Now I'm going to hold down my shift key and select just the node. You can see it's selected because it's in blue. I keep my shift key held down and select this node. So now I have the two curves selected, but this curve on the right has the nodes selected as well. Now I have this aligned to nodes of selected curves. Well, that means I can take this, the top node, and I can drag the whole thing around. And when I get something significant happening with the left curve, like those two points were lining up with each other, I get snapping. If I bring it down here, I get the same thing. Now, what about that bottom node? Can you see nothing's happening there? What about if I take it to here? That bottom node doesn't snap to that node at the top even though it is selected. The only node which snaps is the one I'm currently dragging. Let's try this. Yeah, see that? But I don't get any snapping between those two top nodes there. Okay, so now I turn on this. Snap all selected nodes when dragging. And now when I drag, that snaps. That snaps there, but also, can you see the bottom node even though I'm not dragging this curve by the bottom node, is also snapping to the points of that top node, like that. And if I drag by the bottom node, the top node happily snaps away. That's the difference there. Let's turn this off. Align handle positions using snapping options. I'll turn that on and I'll turn that off. So this is the only currently active one. And I'll move around and absolutely nothing's happening. That's because I haven't got global snapping turned on. Let's click to turn it on. And now when I move around, whatever my snapping options are, is what the curve is snapping to. Like at the moment, imagine there's the little blue bounding box surrounding these two curves. They're snapping to each other according to those rules, like this. And so whatever snapping options you have turned on here will be reflected here when you're doing your snapping. I'll turn that off and turn this on. I will come to my pen tool and create something new. Well, carry on with what I've already got. Now watch what happens when I move around to say here, for example. What that is telling me is that if I put a point down now, it will be at a right angle to the direction lines of my previous point. And that's where you get that little square just to the bottom right of my previous node. It's like when you used to do geometry when you're at school, that little square means there's a right angle there. So I do that. And also if I do this and I go up here for a little bit, that little purple dot is letting me know, and, oh, let's turn off the snapping option, shall we? That little purple dot is letting me know that if I was to click down now, my next point is going to be in the exact same line as the direction handle of my previous point. So you can do that. So that can be useful sometimes. Okay, those are the various options from the context toolbar. I think when you're creating a shape or a path using the pen tool, the most important thing to remember is your control or command key to temporarily activate your node tool. That's what's gonna give you the most control when you're working. Just while we're talking about the pen tool, the snapping options, the node tool, there are one or two extra things I want to say, and I'll focus more on the node tool for this. We already saw we have this option here, perform construction snapping. And we saw that you get various different angles like this. At the moment, the direction line I'm moving is at a right angle to that other direction line, which I'm circling now. But there's more. If I start moving this direction line around, look at this. Now my direction line is at a right angle to that previous node. If I keep on going and there. Now you can see I have two equal angles there. The direction line I'm moving plus that previous direction line are now lying at the same angle relative to each other. Look, I'll show you this. If I move this up a little bit so it's a bit more obvious and move around and there. So now they're at the same angle relative to that little purple angled line that you can see on your screen at the moment. But it doesn't stop there. If I keep on going around, oh, look at that now. You can see another right angle there. If I keep on moving around, this is what I wanted to show you. The direction line I'm dragging plus that previous direction line are now parallel to each other. So you get all these different options. And if I just keep on going around, we've got another right angle shown to us. And if I keep on going around, and now the direction line I'm moving around is pointing straight out the previous node. Yeah, and there's another one, another right angle, and so on and so forth. So really, you get loads of different angles at your disposal. Okay, so let's take a look at how we select things with nodes. At the moment, my selection tool is selected, that's V, 
As we've said before, the node tool, you use A. So with the selection tool, I can select various different things. If I keep on pressing V, you can probably hear me pressing now, nothing happens. Now I'll press A and you can see my node tool get selected and there are my various different nodes. If I press A again, I get the move tool. If I press A again, I get the node tool. So pressing V will give you the move tool and nothing else, but your A key on your keyboard is actually a toggle switch. If I keep on pressing it, I toggle between the node tool and the move tool, which is one reason why if you're editing shapes, it's a good idea to keep your finger resting on the A key because you have this nice toggle ability. Now, when it comes to selecting nodes, clicking on the curve selects the shape you want to work on like this. Let's come down to this big one down here. The node tool by default is that white arrow, but if I come and hover over a node, it changes to black. That means that when I click, that node gets selected and I can move it around like this. Control or Command plus C to undo that. If I want to select more than one node, that is not a problem. I can hold down my shift key and select, and select, and select, and select. Okay, so the next bit is how to deselect a node or nodes from my current selection. Here's the wrong way to do it. Hold down your control key, come to this one, and deselect just that one. Oh no, I haven't. It didn't work. So I'll undo that. This time I will hold down my control key and I will drag out like this. Can you see how when I let go, that node got deselected? So it's a case of remembering holding down the control key and then dragging out like this. If nothing is selected and I drag out a box, nothing happens. You have to click on the shape, then drag out like this. And then I can start adding to my selection by holding on my shift key and just selecting whichever ones I want. There is another way of doing this. I will press away to deselect and on my curve again. If I hold down my alter option button, I start to drag out an irregular lasso area. And if I do that, I select that. And if I do that, I select that node. If I come here, I'll select those two top nodes. And let's select this one as well and let go. So remember the Alt key there. I can also hold down my Alt or Option key and just click and make a polygon selection like this. And get some rather interesting looking shapes, but let go of everything from here. Then come back and then can you see I get that tiny little circle? That's telling me I'm about to close my selection. The points are selected and move them around like this. Okay, just in case you're shouting, what, there's more? Don't worry, just a little bit more. I have my node tool selected. I have three curves here. I have a red curve, a thicker blue one, and kind of a mucky yellow greeny color one. So I'll click on the yellow curve, hold down my shift key, and I get my little plus sign and click on the blue curve and the red curve. So now you can see all these nodes selected. I will drag out a box around these nodes here. And as you can see, even though they're on separate layers, they all get selected, which is useful. The only problem with that is, well, look, I can move them around like this as one unit, but with all those direction handles flying around all over the place, it's getting very hard to see what I'm actually doing there. If only there was a box I could put around it and guess what? Transform and transform mode. I get a box that I can put around it, which actually is quite nice because look, I can move all the points around as one. And when I let go, I lose all those confusing direction lines. I can resize like this. I can rotate like this. And can I get it? It's sometimes a bit fiddly. Yes, I did it that time. I can also shear. So I can move those points around as a whole and do various operations on them. That's nice. Thank you very much. If I come to enable transform origin, I get my little transform origin gizmo right in the center. But if I move it up to say here, for example, now I can move everything around that point there. I can resize everything around that point. So that is useful as well. Now, what about hide selection while dragging? Well, I can hide my box, but I still get all my direction aligned. So that may be useful for you. I will turn it off, I think. Now, show alignment handles. Well, what I'll do before I do that is I will come to this one here, cycle selection box, because at the moment I have a selection box, which is kind of skewed upwards a little bit, which is making things look a little bit awkward. And if I come to this and I move that around there, the whole thing looks rather confusing. If I come to this cycle selection box, 
The selection box resets itself so it is a standard horizontal vertical thing. Be advised though, see that origin point? That is still outside the box, which maybe I should have mentioned, you can put your origin wherever you want. Inside, outside, doesn't matter. But for now, let's move it back in. Okay, so show alignment handles. You get these little triangles. And if I come down to say this one here, can you see how I get a dotted line going up and down? That can be useful for lining up all the nodes inside this box along with say, I'll circle that node there. That's where I'm going to align them with manually. But watch what happens when I do. As soon as I start to drag, all my points suddenly snap to that little dotted blue line. And if I do this, then I can come over and there. They're all aligned up to that point there. I will press Control or Command plus Z to undo that. You have the same at the top. You have the same at the bottom, although it's a bit obscured by the blue curve. And you have these ones in the middle, one and two, like that. And I think finally for this, I'll come to this one here, and I'll come to A for my node tool, and let's just select these points here, and I'll come to my transform box, and let's get rid of everything else. Now at the moment, you can see that bounding box which surrounds all my nodes, it surrounds the nodes, but it doesn't surround, say, this curve here. I've got two selected nodes here and here, but the curve that they make up is outside my selection box. So let's come to this icon here, and you see that? Now the selection box includes the outermost part of all these curves, as well as the nodes that make up the curves. And OK, in case you've fallen asleep, there you go. That's a little clap to wake you up. Let's move on to the next video, and I will see you there.